thing? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I don't Not need this thing, right? Yeah, I got that thing maybe a little closer, a little higher up. How do you, I don't know how to operate it. <laughs> 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 okay, can, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Hey! Here we go. Uh, <coughs> my name's Roy Sutton, I work for HP. I'm in the Developer Relations Division, and my duties include community outreach, uh, helping developers develop for WebOS, helping, uh, uh, one of the other things I do is, mm -hmm. is do the open WebOS project website. Yeah. It's 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 duties will also include uh, reaching out to developers so who are we have a spare uh, interested in contributing to so open WebOS. Uh, so that's me. On Twitter, I'm free one to watch if anybody cares. Okay. Um, so, Open WebOS, what is it? Uh, web OS, open WebOS is an open source operating system. It is a touch oriented operating system. It is based off of web standards and it's built off of Linux and the uh, Open WebOS came from WebOS, which was an operating system invented by Palm. It's a web-based operating system that uh, used a card-based metaphor, which allowed for multicasting <coughs> on handheld devices and then later tablet devices. It was uh, fairly well received for its user interface and its use of web standards. It didn't quite take off as well as we hoped it would, but uh, over the intervening years, uh, Palm was bought by HP, which is where it is now. And uh, I guess it was August of last year, uh, Leo Apotheker made the decision that, that uh, HP was going to stop making WebOS hardware. And after Meg Woodman took over, she decided that we would open source WebOS. So that's how we got here. Um, the roots of WebOS, though, have always been a Linux-based mobile operating system. It is, uh, and Palm has always contributed back to the open source community. OpenSource.palm.com has all of the open source components that were modified uh, to make WebOS work on the various phones and tablets. Um, but that's not, that wasn't a fully open source operating system. And until just recently, when we released our first components, we didn't really have much to offer for people who were looking for an open source uh, operating system. But uh, here are the pieces that comprise open web OS. We have a browser component called ISIS, a platform for the building layer, which is the next project, uh, and DBA, Notecom, and a lot of other pieces that make it up. But it's all built off the Linux standard kernel. Uh, this, uh, this is very similar to Android. Sits on top of Linux. Now it has, of course, its own layer on top of that. And of course, WebOS will have its own layer on top of the Linux standard kernel as well. But all those pieces will be available to people who are interested in using them. So, there's one other thing that was open sourced as part of opening up WebOS, and that was the Enyo project. And I'm going to get into Enyo a little bit more in depth later. But it's not actually part of Open WebOS. It's a sibling project. So I just want to make that clear before we move on. Um, the important thing to know about Open WebOS is that it is really an open source project. The development is taking place in the open on GitHub. It is all the code is released under the Apache 2.0 license, and we are taking pull requests from the community. This, uh, I think this is a very important thing. It's very, uh, it's in, in sharp contrast to the way Google is doing it. Uh, Google's much of uh, their development takes place behind closed doors and then code releases come out uh, and they do not seem to be, they don't take quite that, uh, as much feedback from the community on, on Android. 
but uh, but HP wanted to make it very clear that OpenWebOS was a project that was truly open source. It wasn't something that they were just going <coughs> to take out little pieces of and then, then wash their hands of it. Uh, we have an actual roadmap that uh, specifies how we're going to be releasing the pieces of it. We have uh, we have a lot more on the governance model up on the OpenWebOSProject.com website, and that specifies how we're going to be taking pull requests, how community members can become actual uh, committers. Uh, at this point, uh, all the committers except for the community side uh, are HP employees now, but we have, uh, we have a meritocracy where if people do contribute to the project, it shows that they have an interest and, uh, and the capability to contribute, uh, they will become committers if they're interested in doing so. Um, even at, at this early stage where we've released very few components so far, we've already received uh, pull requests from the community that have been integrated back into the source code. Um, so, the first piece is the ISIS browser. This is based on Qt WebKit, and it is, the, it is a browser component built up from, uh, from Qt WebKit has the pieces necessary to provide a browsing experience. It's not a full-fledged browser like Chrome, uh, but neither is it, is it a raw uh, component. It's neither is it a raw cute component. Uh, it provides many of the gluing pieces necessary to make a browser. And uh, currently, this builds and runs under Ubuntu, which is our, which is our reference platform uh, for open OpenWebOS. <laughs> And uh, the ISIS browser will provide not, not only the browser, but also the components necessary for running the apps for the operating system. I don't know, maybe I didn't get into this enough, but uh, Web, uh, WebOS was based, was envisioned to run as a, an HTML5 web standard based platform. Apps were developed with JavaScript and HTML, uh, although it was possible will be possible to run native apps. Uh, most apps were developed with JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. And we suspect that will continue to be the cases as uh, support for various, uh, as support for HTML5 improves, uh, more and more apps will be developed that way for both desktop and, uh, and mobile devices. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to say, if there's anything that's unclear, you want to ask a question, please throw it up. And as long as it doesn't get out of hand, uh, we'll keep doing that as we go. Yes? Now that HP is making hardware, uh, what does WebOS work on? That's a great question. Right now, it doesn't work on anything. We haven't released the full set of open web. If you're talking about WebOS, it still works on all the devices that it's currently out of now. Open WebOS, hasn't been fully released. But uh, like I said, Ubuntu is the current reference platform uh, uh, for WebOS. What devices it will be available to run on, we'll maybe get into that a little bit later when we talk about the community project. And uh, uh, August, everything should be fully released. I'll get, I'll get into that a little bit later too. But uh, that's our current thing. That's our current thing. Um, I got a question. Uh, yes. Uh, anticipating <coughs> from uh, you know chip makers about. Can I ask you to start again? I, I didn't hear uh, uh, You anticipate any problems uh, of chip makers like Samsung about you know getting specs of their chips to. Oh, okay. So the question was, do we anticipate any problems from hardware? Manufacturers about their chipsets. No, we don't. We don't really anticipate any problems with that because we're built off the Linux standard kernel. We can use the drivers that are available for Android. Um, and, and in fact, this piece I'm going to discuss right now will really kind of answer that question right there. Uh, so let me just get into that. The, the platform portability layer that's in this is the next project. Uh, it provides, it's, it's a hack, it's a hardware abstraction layer that provides access to various hardware devices for the operating, for, for WebOS. It's kind of the, 
It's the glue between an actual log firing a the rice driver and the operating system. And the thing that this gives us is an easier method for porting uh, WebOS to different devices. We don't have to try to, we don't have to pull button you know, if device equals this, else device equals this. Yeah. We have a common API that we can write to from, from WebOS and device, we can take the device drivers that are available for Android, uh, whether one or many for a different type of thing, we could have, uh, for example, you can enumerate a number of different dialing devices. Uh, go out over the network, or you can have Skype dialing. We have one layer that you can write to. Um, the platform portability layer does solve some problems. Uh, you know, binary blobs are uh, an issue. <coughs> device driver exposes different different functions and we're hoping that this uh, hardware abstraction layer will allow us to port easier and uh, be an easier target for people who are working on devices. Uh, the next piece that's been released so far is DB8, which is a database service provider. It provides uh, storage for application settings, uh, contacts, and other things. Uh, on current WebOS devices, the DB8 database is backed up to the web regularly. And this, uh, the other thing that it allows is for sharing of data between applications. For example, the contacts database can it share its contacts with other applications that request it. And we can set uh, different security levels based off of different types of information. For example, an app can, could create contacts within the contacts database that would not be accessible to other applications. Um, and this is currently based on the level DB database engine. And <coughs> some other things that it provides are uh, notifications, changes, triggers. This is uh, this this project could be used for somebody who's interested in having a database uh, with transactional storage in, or database storage with uh, these features. And we'll move on. The next piece is the Novacom driver, which is a communications uh, protocol for communicating sockets over USB. It's mainly used for developers who want to load apps onto the device. Or open a shell device. It's very much like ADB for Android. It uh, provides for uploading, uh, pulling down data, opening a shell, so forth. And uh, this was just released uh, probably about three weeks ago, I'd say. And very soon after it was released, we received uh, some updates from the community where they had taken USB and they replaced it with Wi Fi. So now we can download apps and devices over Wi Fi. Whereas before, if you're a developer writing apps and you wanted to download, you had to plug it in. Uh, so this made that a little bit easier. Normally, when a user is going to install an app, they do that over an app catalog over the year. So the, the Novacom drivers don't really uh, do much for the user, but they're very helpful for a developer. And the last piece was the community edition that I talked about. And this is not an actual repository out there, but uh, it's worth noting that WebOS has had a, uh, a long history of supporting the homebrew community. Uh, it's not an antagonistic relationship as it has been with some uh, operating systems. But uh, WebOS Internal started homebrew for the Palm Brief back before the Palm Brief was actually released, uh, based off of just information that they've been able to glean the day it was released, they began reverse engineering and, and uh, managed to create uh, applications very soon before the official WebOS SDK was released to the public. And uh, Palms uh, worked closely with WebOS internals. And now, Rod Whitney, who started WebOS internals, is actually the project lead for the uh, community uh, engagement. And he's not an HP employee. He's just a member of the community that was invited in to participate in WebOS. 
October one was. And while we don't have a lot of specifics about what they're doing with it, they're working very closely with us to uh, set the order in which we release pieces to the community, uh, working with us to uh, describe what's necessary in order to have uh, something that's functional for uh, contributors who would like to build Google Web West. And uh, further, we suspect uh, that they will be instrumental in getting uh, ROMs or, or, or images or whatnot for loading on other devices besides Web OS devices. Yes. What's that? Ron, Rod Whitby is one of the people who made it possible for us to run stuff on certain open source available platforms. Yes, Rod, Rod Whitby has, has done a lot uh, in, the, in the community. Um, he, like I said, he spearheaded the homebrew community, which had, had uh, replacement kernels available, overclock kernels, patches, uh, a system for maintaining patch compatibility across various <laughs> system type versions, and we suspect they'll continue to do that, uh, providing uh, filling in holes in, in, uh, in the offering of uh, local web OS. So uh, I really wanted to stress this because it's very important for the community to have a, uh, to have a group that's had a long relationship with web OS out there helping people who want to get in to contribute it also shows that we're uh, we're interested in engaging with the community. Now, obviously, the pieces I've discussed so far don't in any way constitute the whole operating system. So there's still a lot left to be open sourced, and uh, we're open sourcing open open sourcing open sourcing that as quickly as we can. Uh, what we have planned on the roadmap right now are node services. Uh, um, but these, we have, do have a roadmap, but so far we've hit every one of our milestones. Uh, we don't anticipate missing any of them right now, but uh, there's quite a lot of uh, work going on taking uh, and separating out proprietary code uh, from what can be open sourced, making replacements for things in which couldn't be open sourced. And, uh, and so we're working hard. Our goal, as I said, was to have a buildable version of Open Web OS by August, uh, which is a pretty aggressive time frame, uh, considering that uh, up until this was announced back in December, we hadn't really given any thought to uh, open sourcing the platform. So uh, <coughs> I, don't, I didn't put any of the dates on here, but they are available on OpenWebOSProject. Uh, what's the uh, language or languages uh, that this stuff is written in? Okay, what is it, what is the language this is written in? Uh, almost everything is in C. C. C, C++. Um, the projects which are currently released are available on GitHub, so you can check that out. The core, pro the core applications will probably uh, all be in JavaScript. Uh -huh. um, there may be, the launcher may be, uh, there may be some parts that are <coughs> that are cute, uh, and I don't, don't know whether those are policy projects or, or what. Just, uh, um, just sort of for those of us who are not so knowledgeable about WebOS, um, what is, is the user space sort of similar to some other distribution? Um, and secondly, um, how, is, how are things like package management? Okay, so what the, the first part was, how is the user space compared to other? Other Linux environments. Other Linux environments. Uh, that's a good question. It's very similar. Uh, the, uh, from the standpoint of permissions, uh, all the apps run in a limited permission space. Uh, how this might work, say, if, if the target environment was Ubuntu, is a good question. There, um, it hasn't previously run on Ubuntu, so we can only speculate how it might work. But uh, 
from, from the standpoint of how the apps might work, we suspect that they would be very much like, uh, uh, it would be very different from, from what you'd be used to. Uh, I don't know how to read this. I don't know how many people have seen what, what's running before, there's but there's a, a card-based metaphor bar? where each app a takes the space of the card, and when you're in an app, it takes the full screen. So it would present very different. Oh, I think, 67 for minutes. Used to a desktop operating system uh, using OS on there. However, uh, the launcher being able to choose mm -hmm. app applications and move quickly back and forth between us would be pretty useful. I think. And then the second question is package management. Package management. Uh, there is a package management utility. Uh, I actually don't see it listed in here, uh, but I suspect those will be released. Part of this, WebOS uses a package uh, management scheme, which is based off of uh, oh gosh, is it? I think the I, web, I think the WebOS internal they use the iPad or something. Yeah. So it would be kind of use the same thing. Yeah, and just very similar to that. Like, like, I could like the open embedded one or something like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. Right. Could you talk about what some of these uh, components are? Because I don't know what a node service is. Sure. Yeah, no, let me get into these a little bit more. Node services, uh, all of the services that, uh, pretty, I'm pretty certain it's all of them now, all the services uh, that applications have access to in WebOS in the most recent version are nodes, are, are written in Node. So uh, Node provides uh, Access to a number of uh, low-level features that couldn't that be done with regular JavaScript. Yeah. Is this, this Node.js the node-driven loop? Um, yes. JavaScript. So all everything you register, you you're executing JavaScript code. Speak up again. You're executing JavaScript code. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so uh, so we provide uh, we provide the ability for app developers to write their own services. So that they can have uh, services running in the background to communicate with, with web services, for example, or to uh, uh, perform calculations that might be difficult to do with, it, with JavaScript uh, directly within the browser. Communicate uh, between processes, perhaps. Um, the Sys Manager and the Sys Manager bus. This is what actually controls apps, launching apps, running apps. Core applications are the, the dialer, the calendar, uh, email. Uh, I don't have a full list of what the core applications will be uh, that come out, but uh, it certainly will be a basic set of applications uh, that people would expect to have on a device of some kind. The uh, build and release model, this would be the actual build process, the, the tools and steps necessary to, to build a, an actual distribution of OpenWebOS. And of course, the OpenWebOS beta would be the first output of that build process. Um, yes? Um, OK. If you are legally port an uh, open source operating system to a device, you don't have to give permission What's that? Can you speak if up you, a little? If you port a uh, open source operating system to a device, like a phone, yeah. you don't have to get permission? No. Okay. No. No, no, no permissions would be needed to run on another device. Uh, and it's not to say that, uh, for example, the, uh, the end user license when you bought the device might tell you you're not allowed to do anything with it, but you know once you bought it, it's your device, you can do with it what you want. Um, by the same token, I don't think that means that you can turn around and buy a bunch of Samsung Galaxies, for example, flash them over WebOS, and then sell them somewhere uh, as Samsung WebOS devices. Um, I don't know what the legality of that would be. But, uh, yes? So when you say it is based off uh, Ubuntu, uh, does that mean the uh, user is expecting some part of the code to be similar to the Ubuntu source code, or when you say it's based off Ubuntu, or based on the concept of Ubuntu, or the 
queries. The size is the same, but the code is different. Okay, the question was, um, should, should you expect the project to be like Ubuntu or rely on Ubuntu and, and otherwise be entangled with Ubuntu? Uh, no, it's it, like uh, I, I said before, it's based on the Linux standard kernel. The reference platform right now uh, is Ubuntu, but uh, there, there won't be any dependencies on Ubuntu and uh, there shouldn't be any uh, Ubuntu code involved. Yes? Could you match it with a different Linux distribution? Probably. But you might be on your own doing that. Um, so, what I can say is that right now, any of the projects that are in GitHub have been compiled and will, will build on Ubuntu. Whether it will build on anything else, I can't make any promises. But obviously, the objective is to have this as a uh, operating system that would work on multiple different platforms. But, uh, there we go. Any other questions? Two very brief questions. Uh, first one is, if I want to try this on, uh, say, Ubuntu for Python that comes out later this month, or that like just came out, uh, will it work on that, or is it a specific older version of Ubuntu? Uh, it's not a specific build of Ubuntu, uh, and as far as I know, it works on the latest build. Okay. Uh, so that's about to change this month, so that's going to take It's about to change this month. Will they move over to the latest one? Probably. Okay. But, uh, but maintaining, uh, I can't speak to what okay. the various projects will do. I suspect uh, that some of them will roll over right away, and some of them will not. But uh, it, the objective is to keep current. Okay, and the other question is, is there any, I, I'm a person I'm familiar with uh, WebOS, is there any, or open WebOS, is there anything you can demo for us on your laptop? Uh, can I demo anything? I, it doesn't have to be complete, just anything you can show us. I, I'm, I might be, if I have time later, I might show off some, some WebOS stuff. I, I will show off some end your stuff in a few minutes. But, uh, but no, open WebOS, I have nothing, but I can show off the WebOS emulator from old versions. Yes. Will uh, web, Open Web OS uh, break any new ground as far as, um, you know, like being better than uh, current, uh, you know, mobile devices? Well, the question is, will, will it break any new ground? Uh, I, I would say that uh, the Web OS broke that ground several years ago. Uh, will there be something new and exciting in, in Open Web OS? Uh, well, that remains to be seen, but uh, it certainly will carry on with uh, with all the uh, positive attributes that WebOS brought to the table. Some that, that still haven't been copied by the other operating systems. So, uh, so definitely, we've got uh, we've got some tremendous uh, HI people uh, working with us. And so, I, I expect we're going to see uh, the platform continue to evolve. Now. Let me, let me keep moving here before we get too caught up. Now, the second piece that I mentioned was Angular. Not directly related to Open Web OS. It is a sibling. And Enyo is an HTML5 application development framework. And it was designed to be the application development framework for the touchpad. Um, we have released at this point both Enyo 1.0 and Enyo 2.0 uh, as open source. It is under the same <laughs> license. Uh, it is free to use. It is cross-platform. It works on mobile and desktop. And uh, as it says here, strong focus on encapsulation and reuse. I'll, I'll go back and give you a little history now. Enyo 1.0, as I said, was the application development framework for WebOS. And uh, probably in the thousand uh, apps were created specifically for the touchpad using Enyo. Uh, Enyo is, uh, takes very strong use of HTML5 and provides a, a consistent look and feel for applications. It is very, uh, it's a word I want to use here, uh, very focused on uh, apps. Yes. 
Does it have um, support for uh, media codecs and things like that? Uh, no, it doesn't have support with, uh, for media codecs. Those will be provided by the browser. Uh, um, this and you know, is, uh, is, is an app development framework uh, for creating the apps. But uh, it's, it's, it's anticipated that you'll run that in a browser. Oh. Is that an IDE or an API? Uh, Good you? question. Uh, there, it, it, there are two components to it. I, I didn't put that in here, but there is uh, a component called Aries, which is uh, a visual designer IDE for, uh, for applications. Aries 1.0 was actually not for Enyo, but for mobile applications, which were what ran on the phones before the tablet was released. And you, uh, Aries 2.0 is planned to be released this month, and that will provide uh, what you see is what you get designer for any applications. And, uh, and, and what I'll do, um, let me wrap this up real quickly. So any 1.0. That's Aries as in like a god? Yes. And you know, like a god also. Got it. Um, the Enyo 1.0 is now available and is, is open sourced as well, so it can be used on uh, the Apple App Store, uh, the Android market, and uh, uh, it works also on some other devices, the BlackBerry, uh, tablet, Playbook, and uh, Windows Desktop can be used, uh, can be used to write uh, Mac widgets as well. So. Uh, and we've had quite a number of people who developed apps for the touchpad uh, convert those over and run them on the App Store using, uh, using their exact same code. Uh, so let me get into this a little bit here. Enyo is trying to be a, uh, a full JavaScript platform. And, and if you notice here, these are the different areas that it touches. And you might see that since it touch, since it uh, touches many of these same areas. This, that would be sort of the analog to Enya. Uh, with the distinction that uh, Sencha is purely for a uh, for the mobile devices, whereas uh, XJS would be the desktop. And the other distinction I would make between the two of them is that uh, Sencha is Pay to play uh, framework, whereas Enyo is completely free. Yes? So if you develop an app in Enyo, do you, did your browser specifically need Enyo support, or any JavaScript enabled browser can run it? Any JavaScript capable browser. It's fully cross platform. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. But uh, there's several pieces to make this up. Uh, the framework is sort of the, the core Enyo piece. Uh, there are various layout, uh, co uh, various layout uh, engines available for Enyo, and this is where you get into so maybe some more uh, platform specific. The first uh, one that is available now, uh, excuse me, that's fine. Uh, uh, there, there is one layout engine now which is, should be cross-platform compatible with, with any uh, modern browser, but there may be uh, different layouts available which rely on, for example, uh, WebKit. There are uh, UI tool uh, UI tools widgets available for it. Currently, there's Phonix, but again, there may be uh, platform-specific versions of these UI tools available. Uh, for example, uh, there may be Metro theme widgets available. Uh, it's a pluggable interface, so we have a uh, capability to add uh, a number of different uh, UI styles. Uh, and the last piece in the development tool, and I, I talked a little bit about Aries, and uh, Aries uh, was very well received with the first version, and the second version should also allow for people who are new to JavaScript to create powerful applications uh, within a web browser. It's entirely hosted in the web browser, uh, drag and drop, create uh, applications. It's uh, but it doesn't dumb it down to the point where people who are familiar with developing JavaScript applications, uh, where they wouldn't be able to uh, use the same tool. Yes? 
Did I understand you correctly? Did you say Aries is a JavaScript app? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's entirely a browser. It's a, Aries is entirely a browser hosted application. So, Enyo, as you're describing, is Enyo then like, like um, an include, like jQuery or something? Or yeah, it's very similar. To write code. Well, if you're just sitting down to write a piece of code that's going to somehow interact with Enyo, what, what environment are you sitting in? Uh, why don't you wait until I get into the example, and then I'll give you a, an example of how that works. Uh, the one piece that you'll notice that we're not touching on right now is the native deployment, and that's PhoneGap, pretty much. What we uh, recommend is if you want to deploy this to a, a specific mobile platform rather than just putting it on a web browser, then you package it up with PhoneGap, and this will provide the uh, compatibility layer to the various pieces of, of a mobile device. Yes? I'm not sure if everybody knows what PhoneGap is. Oh, okay. Yeah, PhoneGap is a uh, provides a compatibility layer between the various different mobile devices, so that people who write JavaScript applications can can code to a standard uh, API and still have access to things like the accelerometer, uh, phone dialing, uh, local storage, uh, and and so forth. And so PhoneGap provides tools for packaging applications. So you can take a JavaScript application, package it up so that it will run on iOS, or on Android, or, um, or Blackberry, or WebOS devices. So uh, in, uh, what you should be able to do with Eric is once you're done, is hit a button, and it will go out. Uh, there's, a, there's a hosting service that PhoneGap uh, provides. Actually, PhoneGap is now called um, Oh, what's it been reading to? I made that. Cordova. Cordova? Cordova? Cordova, yeah. Thank you. Cordova. Cordova. Um, that, I think it's Apache. Right. Uh, so uh, they have a host environment where you can send your package and it will package up and spit out ready to upload to uh, app catalogs. Uh, packages for you. Something like that. Um, so, I'm going to do a little in your exam. Because uh, it would be nice to know what it looks like. One of, uh, Enya is very, uh, has a very distinct style. It's not, it's, it's very different from jQuery. jQuery, uh, you have some HTML and you kind of enhance it with jQuery. You do something with the nodes and play with this. And Dialogues and add some functionality to it. Um, so, what I'm going to do here, this is perhaps, is that good enough size? Or you guys need that larger? How's that? How's that? Okay. This is the most simple here. Uh, what I've done is I've included the Enyo. Uh, library here, and the Enyo library will pull in whatever is necessary. And then I've got a script tag where I have created a new Enyo control, and I just set <coughs> the content of it, and then by default, uh, any Enyo control has a content value, which is basically an inner HTML, if you can give it that way. Um, hello, so let's change this to So save that, open it up, there it goes. Pretty straightforward, but the thing I want you to see here is that uh, the application is built up around these controls, and we we'll specify the control, uh, the contents of the control, and the, and the settings of the controls as a, uh, a JavaScript object. Now, in case I didn't stress this enough, Enyo is a very object-oriented uh, framework. We will uh, demonstrate that in a moment. What I'm going to do is, or what I've taken the opportunity to do, is I've created a second version here where it looks pretty much like the first. I've included the annual framework, but now I'm creating something called a path. 
which is a an inyo kind. They're called kinds to, to uh, kind of stress that they are a, a type of object that uh, that we've created. Here's an inyo kind. I've given it a name app, which is what we used here to instantiate our app. And we've given it a kind that it's based upon and some content. Now what I can do now that I've made this kind, I can use it over and over again. I can go back here and copy that and put another one in there. And we can go here. And we've got two of them. Very exciting, yeah. But it uh, it does allow us to reuse this piece that we've just created. What, um, yes. So the right is a method which is present in some global uh, parent of any kind. Yes. What we're doing here, uh, because this is running as uh, this is basically doing a document right. It, it's it's appending to it as it's being executed when the page loads. Uh, and the when it enyo loads, it is uh, it will take care of setting up the environment that's necessary for running the application, uh, loading in uh, style sheets, and things like that are necessary. What I'd like to do now is show a bit more thorough example. So now what I've done is I've got something that's very similar, but I've included the, uh, let me this up here so you can see. I've included the Onyx package here, which as uh, you may have seen before with the UI toolkit. This is a set of widgets uh, It's available now. It covers many of the, uh, the widgets you need for developing a full app. And here, this is more similar to what you might see for a, an application. Each control can have one or more components that are descended from it. In this case, we have uh, an unnamed control right here, which specifies just a style. It'll be a div. It'll turn into a div into, in the HTML. And I just told it I want a, a five pixel margin around. And within that control, we're going to put, we can do a little simple uh, survey application here. So I'm going to say, uh, you enjoy the application, and uh, I've put a radio group so somebody can select the answer. And uh, because we want to be positive here, I only gave positive answers. And then I can just copy, what I did was copy that and add in a second uh, question. Take a look at what that looks like. Put that right there. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's not very exciting, but one of the things you notice here is we've repeated a lot of the information by just copying and pasting this in here. Uh, and one of the things that Enyo really excels at is taking this uh, type of situation and allowing us to extract functionality and encapsulate it into another kind. If you notice, we've, we've got two blocks that are almost entirely the same. So what I can do is I can create a kind that's based off of this. And what I've done is I've done exactly that. I created a kind here called survey. And if you ignore some of this extra stuff that I've stuck in there, basically you'll see here, I've got the component section, which has the same radio group, and questions, and what I can do, because I've extracted this, I can oops, what I can do here is go in here and say that I want to use uh, a survey kind, and I want to give it a question of Once 
have done that. Oh, it didn't work. And, then, and because we added a new file called survey.js, which is not included. So we added, uh, and it has the ability to have packages. So a package is a defined, let me open that up here. This is, uh, and it has the ability to load various files that are necessary, whether they be style sheets, or JavaScript files. So <laughs> I've got a package file that includes the survey and, uh, and third.js. So let's take a look here. Yeah. Uh, but the idea is that I can go and I can replace every one of these with the same piece here. So now I have abstracted away. I don't remember what the question was. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm trying to do is find out where survey.js went, because it's supposed to load as part of the package.js. And it does not appear to be loading. But it also doesn't seem to be showing me any errors here. Here, I have this question where I can set 
I can set the default value for the question, and I can later call, if I need to change the question, I can call the set question. Um, and it provides a set of methods of that, uh, a getter, et cetera, for properties based on the time. So what I did was I created that on there. And if somebody changes the question, I can update the contents of the question to reflect that. And further, uh, Enio has an event system where events that occur on an object uh, can bubble up to the parents. In this case, I've created a custom event called one change uh, for when, uh, theoretically, when somebody clicked on a question that showed up, ah, there we go. I'm missing a comma. Let's see if that's what it was. How do you like that? Did I mess up entirely? Um, so, now, um, it would be nice if Chrome had given me a, 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 an error that I could use. Uh, so I created an event. And this event is on change. When somebody uh, in here in my radio group kind, a radio group is a kind that represents buttons where only one can be selected at a time. So I've, I've given it. Can you see that? No, you can't see that. It's off the screen. Um, I've got an on click, which is basically a click handler of click. We can scroll down and see what that looks like. The click handler gets called whenever this, uh, this is clicked. And we can call get active to retrieve the active button in there. And then we can get the caption of that button. And then we can call do change, which will call the event handler for whoever is instantiating this object. So uh, I think that covers the, uh, the pieces I wanted to show off, which were the events and the properties. Uh, we can derive, I can, I can now go out and I can derive another kind from survey which has additional functionality. Uh, as my application grows, I can break pieces off and use those, reuse those in another application. If uh, uh, reuse is extremely difficult in some, uh, in some applications, uh, but it's extremely easy to do with any of the way we can encapsulate the functionality. I could, I, this, uh, this particular radio group, I could uh, further extract this out. I had some uh, extra functionality that I wanted to put on there and then include that. So uh, being able to, uh, this, this, uh, this here was a good, good first step here where we had a number of different components to it. And uh, we quickly prototyped our application, got out there, and we saw, hmm, we, this, this code here looks the same as this code here. How can we extract this? Very quickly. Very little structural change to the application. We just could code out, put it in another file, um, and then we were able to enhance it further with uh, additional functionality. Uh, I think this is one of the real strengths of the web section. Can you uh, characterize qualitatively what the performance is like on mobile devices within you? Is any sort of acceleration available in the WebOS browser for? Uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, where, uh, where possible, we take advantage of CSS transitions for speed. Uh, specifically with the annual 1.0 applications, there's a, a scroller that we have uh, that provides smooth scrolling. And uh, it works very well on WebOS. It works fairly well on iOS. And the Android browser is really terrible. It's really a function of the Android browser being really terrible. <laughs> uh, you, you are aware of the time. I, 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 well. do, you mean, do you mean there's also the Dolphin HD, which is the favorite browser? Is that included in that, or is it just the stock? This, the, this, this, the stock browser, the one that runs for applications. Uh, well, I mean, I think we know, because uh, we get the Chrome browser available for Android now. Uh, but uh, this, the scrolling performance is somewhat poor in Android, uh, and it's something that they're working on for, uh, for Android 2.0. But uh, yes, to, to the extent that it's possible, uh, there will be uh, acceleration based on CSS transformations. Okay, let's get back here. <coughs> that was my annual example. And, uh, the last piece that I want to talk about was the annual community gallery. 
because Angular supports so many, so, uh, this encapsulation of creating custom kinds, we have a gallery where uh, the community can contribute, contribute kinds. Um, these are UI widgets, they're sometimes uh, uh, they can be layout managers, they can be other pieces. Um, they're probably uh, 20 or so, 30 that have been contributed since the moment about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, and I suspect that will continue to uh, expand. I, I expect to see uh, platform specific kinds which uh, have stylings based off the platform's iOS style, an Android style, a Metro style. And, uh, and that, uh, very easy to, to uh, contribute there. It's all based out of GitHub. So if you create a kind that you're in, interested in sharing, I just do is issue a pull request uh, to the kind gallery be included into the gallery. So uh, from that standpoint, I think it's very similar to the jQuery approach, where jQuery has a base, and then there are a ton of plugins that you can use in addition to it. And that's uh, one of the things that I'd really like to see happen with the Angular community is have a, uh, is have a gallery of plugins that people can use for creating uh, complex applications. <coughs> Yes. I actually have a couple of questions. One, have you seen any, or like, what's the most interesting application you've seen written in Enyo? Like, do you have, like, one in particular that stands out that you don't want to show? The us most or? interesting Enyo application? Um, probably the most interesting uh, Enyo application would be the mail application that came with the touch pad. It's, uh, it's a very nice email app. Uh, one of the things that was very uh, prominent about the WebOS style that was in NEO 1.0 was the sliding panes. I don't know if anybody saw those, but there was a, um, uh, to reveal more information and to adapt to different size displays, uh, information could be, a pane could be slid open or closed to reveal more or less information. Um, here's the NEO roadmap. I'll let you read that very quickly. April. Uh, NEO 2.2 should bring uh, a full feature parity up to where NEO 1.0 was. Uh, with scrollers uh, and some of the more advanced widgets that haven't been released yet. Uh, it's a much uh, harder uh, thing to target all the various browsers that are available uh, with the widget set. It was very easy when we had a browser we knew intimately. And even uh, even targeting just WebKit, uh, there's so many different versions of WebKit out there that have their own quirks that, uh, that even just targeting a WebKit base is a little difficult. So uh, that's uh, the end of your roadmap. And uh, as I mentioned, Aries 2.0 uh, should be available by the end of the month. And that will that'll be interesting. Uh, now, the last piece is getting involved. It is an open source project. and uh, HP does want the community to get involved. There are many places you can find out more information. Uh, the openwebosproject.com website uh, is sort of the hub for everything. It has, the, has information on the various projects, links to the GitHub repositories for those projects, uh, our, our, our charter as it is, as it were. Uh, and it has all these other links in there as well. Uh, GitHub is the place where code is github.com slash open web OS. Uh, uh, Enyo is not hosted there. It is github.com slash Enyo JS. There are IRC channels in the JS and open web OS. And there are forums. And uh, like I said, we're taking pull requests. We'd love to get people involved. And uh, I think the last thing is some trivia questions. Um, well, I think. Maybe, and, well, let's ask questions. We have time for it. We have a little bit of time. Uh, well, not much, I guess. But um, uh, I guess um, I'm just going to ask you a question. What is, and probably we're bracing for this one, uh, but what is HP's uh, sort of strategic direction here? Obviously, they like to do things that you know are profitable for them in some way, shape, or form. And I think people that are interested in possibly getting involved 
might want to know that there's um, there's some stability on that front and so that things are that they're gonna be sticking with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Are we talking about maybe eventually having some more hardware from HP or something? Uh, I, I, Meg may have hinted at that. Uh, there is uh, Meg Whitman, yes. CEO of HP. Um, but right now, there is not a plan for, or there's no announcement of, of a plan for uh, of, of HP hardware running web OS. Uh, HP has uh, committed to uh, several years of development for open web OS. So uh, it's not just throwing it over the fence and, and leaving it. Web, uh, how HP intends to use WebOS internally hasn't been announced yet, uh, but it is something we're working on. Web experience being explored. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, value in open WebOS, uh, and HP is looking for uh, all sorts of things. But uh, there's nothing been announced yet. Hopefully, uh, we'll have things to announce as uh, as we get uh, people who are interested in, in WebOS. Um, what is HP's uh, stock in WebOS? What's that? What is HP's stock in open WebOS? What is it stock? In other words, um, what are they going to get out of this? What are they going to get out of this? Well, that's a good question. Um, and I can't, I can't speak for, uh, for what they think they're going to get out of it. But uh, there are a lot of things that they can get out of it. Uh, it is a, an operating system they could use in conjunction with uh, various devices that they have, maybe printers or uh, other equipment that they manufacture. Uh, it could be an app delivery platform for the desktop. Uh, Enyo could be a development tool for uh, developing apps internally. There are a number of different things. Uh, and. That's just my take on it. That's not any official stance uh, because we haven't announced anything at this time. Uh, but uh, but we do have a commitment for continuing. This could be like a, a de facto standard for computing. Could be. I, I'm very interested to see the direction it's going because it's 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 still unfolding for us. Yes. Um, considering that Apple with iOS, which is a proprietary system, yes. has um, billions and billions and millions of these cars sitting in the yes. of the story down there. And since Android is, and currently at least, the main competitor to iOS, uh, and, they, and certainly uh, Android is available on uh, a whole host of uh, different devices, and it's open source as well. Mm -hmm. um, and exactly when Windows very late uh, came into the area. How is uh, HPC competing with those two, at this point, very well established uh, objects? And that, that's a, a great question. Uh, how will, as HPC Open Web West competing against iOS and Android and uh, even yeah, Windows? Windows I think it's even yeah. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, just the Android. Uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think what uh, I, I can't I can't really say because I don't I don't know. But I can I can speculate that uh, that what HP wants to do is is make it more open than Android is. Uh, where it uh, where it gets traction uh, is something that they're working on. So uh, hopefully we'll have some announcements about what the direction. It's going, but uh, I don't have anything specific that I can say about that. Yes, what about target devices? Target devices? Any, any device. <laughs> so now that the question is how is it running, anything, I know you talk about carrying to more higher HP printers as an intelligent front panel. Could be. Could be. I, I, I myself would love to see some of the really slick phones that are coming out running it, uh, uh, a new tablet, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Yes? Okay. Um, what does the team look like inside HP that's working on that? And are they working on any other related technologies like Qt, like JavaScript uh, engines, things like that? Or uh, What does the team look like? Um, well, it's the team uh, from Palm. Uh, 
we have uh, <clears throat> a number of different uh, groups within it working on the various technologies. Are they working on other related technologies? I think we're pretty well focused on the pieces of, of Open Web OS and Enya right now. Yes? Yeah, you mentioned open source a number of times. What license is all this for this time? Apache 2.0. If someone were to get into one of these two technologies, what would you recommend? Open Web OS or you? Uh, well, they're, uh, they're related, but uh, if you are an app developer, uh, a website developer, then Enyo is what you're interested in. If you're looking for an operating system to run on uh, a device or looking for pieces of an operating system, then Open Web OS would be what you would So they're, they're, uh, they're not directly related. Yes. Are any of the released pieces currently interoperable with the WebOS? Could you drop Open WebOS components onto, say, an existing device? Good question. Um, to my knowledge, no. Um, that is uh, undoubtedly something that they're working on with the, uh, the WebOS internals and community edition. I'd very much like to see the uh, ISIS browser ported over to the touchpad, for example, uh, to get an even better uh, browsing experience. But uh, currently, no. Okay. Yes, you yeah. have a last, last question, and we'll do a little trivia real quick. Okay. Well, then I'll make it look a little bit more interesting than asking how many users you have. Um, <coughs> Uh, database, HTML5, local storage, or databases, do you support it? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, it's SQLite. <coughs> okay. Um, trivia questions? Yeah, trivia questions. Okay. Okay, so we have, uh, have printouts. <laughs> we have three coupons from uh, one of our sponsors, O'Reilly Media, for a free ebook. <coughs> Is the URL you go to? Yeah. I I've, I've never actually redeemed one, so uh, I've done the URL and just there's no way to, to, to identify. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> there's no form to fill in or no coupon code to attach to. I I don't know. I think the URL might be the coupon code. I would encourage you not to abuse it so that O'Reilly continues to uh, want to sponsor us and allow this. <laughs> uh, there. Okay. I also have, uh, from last month's presentation, we had a book that came a little bit late, Managing Infrastructure with Puppet. I will ask you for a question about Puppet after it Okay. okay. Uh, first one's a softball here. What is the URL for the Open Web West project? Anyone? Yes. OpenWebOSProject.com. Uh, That's correct. Can you repeat that? Before? And the answer is OpenWebOSProject.com. That's the softball question. Okay, the second question is what is the name of the project that provides the platform portability layer? You may remember what that was nicknamed.